Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the Monday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. This is Memorial Day. If you happen to be off of work and able to listen today, I say a very special welcome to you. If you are one that has served in our military, if you are a part of a family who's lost someone who served in the military, I want to say a very special warm a thank you to you for the service that you have given, your family member has given to me personally and to my country and to your country. Thank you so, so very much. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus in chapter 17. If this happens to be your first opportunity to listen because perhaps you are on vacation off of work for the day, for Memorial Day, and you're wondering why is this strange speaker on the radio, why is he taking us to the book of Leviticus? Well, friend, we are teaching our way through the book of Leviticus, basically a chapter at a time, and we're up to chapter 17. And my question or my title for this chapter is this, how healthy is is your holiness. How healthy is your holiness? So right now, get your Bible. Join me, if at all possible, Leviticus chapter 17. Get something on which you can take some notes. It'll be of help to you. I've got a gospel tract in my hand I want to explain to you and urge you to get from us. A lot of things to do, but let me lead into our Bible study time this way. One of the major events in Jesus' earthly ministry was his Sermon on the Mount, and even secular people will applaud this sermon. They applaud it even though they really haven't read their way all the way through. They tend to stop at the first 12 verses where the Beatitudes are found. Well, if you keep reading in the Sermon on the Mount, you're going to find that Jesus spoke about uh, sinning by breaking just one of the commandments. He spoke about anger, adultery. He spoke about his own authority. Jesus then called on his followers to be perfect be handling their money his ways, and he teaches them how to pray. And Jesus even speaks about hell from the vantage point of it being a very real place. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus dealt with some pretty practical aspects of the personal daily life for those people who were genuine followers of him. Well, I say that because starting here in Leviticus chapter 17, we find God giving laws that hit the Jewish nation right smack dab in their daily lives. He gave them a day of atonement in chapter 16 so they could be holy. And now, beginning at chapter 17, he gives them some duties because they are holy. So let me ask, how healthy is your daily holiness? Get your Bible, Leviticus 17, and join us. I mentioned the gospel tract a moment ago. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We've been publishing tracts for 80 years and giving them away all over the world. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Are You in Danger? It is a track for older, aged, elementary kids, maybe even early kids that are in their adolescent days. But friend, this is a great gospel tract. If you ever wanted to read a bedtime story to your own kids as a Christian family, here's a great one for you. I dare you to start reading it and try to stop in the middle of the story. Your kids won't let you. Are you in danger? It's based upon a true event in the life of our founder. He's out in a boat by himself in a thunderstorm, and the only light he has is when the lightning comes and he's in danger. It leads right into a clear gospel presentation. This is a great track. Are you in danger? At the end of my 
teaching time, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, we'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, Are You in Danger? (laughs) Well, Leviticus chapter 17, pardon if I skip around a little bit. I begin at verse 3. Here's what the Bible says. What man soever be, there be of the house of Israel that killeth an ox or a lamb or goat in the camp, or that killeth it out of the camp, and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, blood shall be imputed unto the man. He hath shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among the people. Look at verse 7. And they shall no more offer their sacrifice unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. Look at verse 10. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among the people. Look at verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I'm going to stop reading right there if you do not mind. Here in chapter 17, we have the beginning of uh, some daily rules for holiness. And before I begin to teach this, let me put this chapter into some broader perspective and flow of the book. Chapters 1 through 7 of Leviticus gave us laws on the way. Notice the W word, the way to God, how to prepare to worship God. Next, chapters 8 through 15 gives us laws for the workers of God. Those are the priests. But now, beginning in chapter 16, going through chapter 22, these are chapters dealing with the walk with God. The section opens with chapter 16, where the Day of Atonement laws are given, and the Day of Atonement made the people holy before God. You can't walk with a holy God unless you are made holy. That's the point of chapter 16. But now, in chapter 17, going through chapter 22, we're going to find some duties given to the Jews because they were holy. Have you noticed at all in your time around people that there's a whole lot of people who want you to believe that Jesus is their friend and Jesus is their savior, he's taken their sin away, he's made them fit for heaven, but they don't want Jesus telling them anything at all about how they ought to live their life while they are headed for heaven? You know, if you found people like that? Look here with me at Leviticus 17. It's going to get with the fact that people who are holy need to live holy. There are four parts here to chapter 17. I'm going to label each one with a key D word, D like in the word dog. Verses 1 through 16, here, domesticated animal sacrifices. Domesticated animal sacrifices where they must be brought to. Then verses 7 through 9, demonic animal sacrifices are utterly forbidden. We read verse 7, there were talks about making a sacrifice to devils, and that word there referred to the Egyptian goat god. The goat god was the god of fertility, and some of the Jews during those 40 years of wandering were worshiping this goat idol, this goat god. The third part of chapter 17 is verses 10 to 12. My word there is denied. They're denied animal blood. No one was to eat blood. This caused the Jews to develop those laws that you and I know for their food called kosher food. The last section, verses 13 to 16, is this, dead Dead animals and eating. Dead animals and eating. Eating any animal which died any other way except by being butchered made the person unclean. All right. Now, that's the chapter in the four major parks. Now, to be sure, God was protecting the Jews from diseases when he told them not to eat the blood and not to eat dead animals. God knew about some things that people did not, and obeying God protected them even though they were not aware of the risks that were around them. 
So let's get to the key question. What in the world are you and I to learn and apply from Leviticus chapter 17? Well, I'm glad you asked. I want to make two key lessons today. Lesson number one is this. It's a little long. Listen to me. Lesson one, animals were not to be worshiped or elevated to the status equal to people but their life was given by God and had to be viewed as belonging to God. I'm going to say that again. Animals were not to be worshipped. They were to be used in worship, but they were not to be worshipped or they were not to be elevated to a level and status equal with people. But their life, animal life, was God-given, and that life had to be viewed as a gift from God, as belonging to God. Now, how the Jew viewed life, even animal life then, would make them very, very different from the pagan nations all around them. The Jews had what's called a world view that started with this clear, utter, basic truth. Life comes from God and has value. Now, that's the starting point for any biblical worldview. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two really is based here upon verse 11. Verse 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you for upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. The human person, the human soul, is of such great value that for it to be right before God required the bloody death of a substitute. Jesus was introduced at the very beginning of his earthly ministry by John the Baptist this way. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So he went, Jesus did, he went about Judea, he went about Samaria, he went all over that area declaring who he was. He did that by his words. He did that by his deeds. He declared that he is the Christ, the Messiah. He declared himself to be the Savior of the world. That's how he was an Announced to Joseph and to Mary. But to accomplish that, blood had to be spilt. His blood had to be spilt. His blood was shed for the remission. That word means forgiveness. His blood was shed for the remission of the sins of people. Jesus came to die on Calvary and to shed his blood, not just to cover over our sins for a year. He died to remove our sins forever and make you and I fit, fit to be with God forever. You and I are so valuable to the eternal creator, almighty God, that he willingly gave his life as the ransom payment for your soul and for mine. You and I need a Savior from our sin. There's only one. His name is Jesus. Out of love, he came and died and shed his blood in your place, in my place. But that value of that blood only becomes personal, only becomes applicable when you and I personally bow our head in a repentant heart and say, Father God in heaven, I'm the sinner for whom Jesus died and shed his blood. I need a Savior. Forgive me of my sin for Jesus sake. I take his blood as my sin payment. Receive him today, friend. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.